Hi everybody, happy Sunday. Um, you know, when I reviewed what I had shared with you all last time as part of my introduction to Encounters with the Rich and Famous, I found that I actually left out something very critical that I had put down in my editorial note. And that was the reason sometimes people amass that kind of love, respect, wealth, and richness of uh, connectivity and experience is that they have the courage to transcend accepted ideas of what is right and what is not so right. And you know, we live in highly fluid times. Things are changing by the nanosecond. Technology has become such an enabler that even a person who just sits cross-legged and smiles at the camera every day has a passive income on YouTube and millions and millions of followers. So there is definitely, there are some hacks out there for modern celebrityhood. Um, one day we will figure it out and I swear to you, I will publish another book called The Hacks of Modern Tech Celebrityhood because it's a subject that really fascinates me. But for now, I want to go back to what I didn't share with you last time. And it was that celebrities in many ways are in some ways playing on the idea of the lifeless bird, taking it forward, the poem that I wrote, The Lifeless Bird, when I was nine years old, which kind of gave me, it opened the portal to verbal communication as a field that I would be serious about. Now, when you take that metaphor into celebrityhood, it mainly means celebrities whose lives often resemble living birds, okay, soaring kites, cutting through edges of normal human experience, breaking through shackles that we all struggle with, be they social, economic, or spiritual. The world needs its icons. We need ideals to emulate. Celebrities have the power, and they know it, to set the trend and to be leaders. Leadership is such a mystical thing. Sometimes we may have zero leadership qualities when we're growing up. Um, I remember reading Priyanka Chopra's biography. She was heavily discriminated against in school in the United States to such an extent that she used to stay back late to avoid certain kids. She used to come in early to avoid meeting certain kids. She put in those extra hours just to save herself from being discriminated against. And all that can do a lot to shatter your self-esteem as a young adult. And eventually she chose to come back to India because she was so fed up of being treated uh, as this colored second class sort of a, you know, citizen. And uh, even in the family in India, she and her dad were the only people who had a little color in their skin. They were not pale and pear and lovely uh, as our population loves to call it. So. She was actually, once there was an expostulation in her family saying, who will marry you? You're so dusky, you're so dark. And one of my ex-colleagues at Hello actually was in school with Priyanka and now he's in Los Angeles. His name was Satish. And when he first told me, he said, you know, Sangeeta Priyanka Chopra is actually dusky and beautiful. I said, well, in the imagery that I see of her today, I don't even notice her skin color. What shade of caramel or what shade of coffee or what shade of tea she might be I haven't or chocolate I haven't even bothered I myself was called chocolate milk by Chinese kids in Taiwan in my class and I remember my teacher getting really upset and punishing the entire class by asking them to put down a hundred times that I will not discriminate against anyone of a different color from me because they were all mostly yellow people around uh, yellow and aspiring to be white so anyway, so with Priyanka now, she's this interesting fusion of all colors, I would say. You know, I mean, she was a Miss World. Miss Worlds generally represent a global ideal of intelligence and beauty. And so because the world has become so small, celebrityhood has also become about engaging with people, making them fall in love with you, and constantly raising the bar, be it your performances, be it your appearances, be it your sense of style. These are the ingredients that go into building a celebrity quotient. And um, so as we are getting into this wonderful book, uh, I would like to point out that each one of you has a unique quality, a USP. 
and as we explore the stories of what our celebrities were bringing to the table and how, uh, let us then jog back to your strengths. Let us summarize what lessons we are learning from each personality. Jog back to what you stand for. What are your belief systems? What are your USPs? And take that as the value of that sharing. So from tomorrow onwards, I will be doing that exercise with each chapter that I share from. I will distill what lessons I have actually learned from my interactions with that particular celebrity. And the first one in the book is Amitabh, Amitabh Bachchan. Look at the man's staying power. Look at the life lessons that he learned. There was a time I remember on Simi Garewal's show when he was uh, not really a hero anymore and he was not old enough to be cast as a father figure. So he was sort of in this very nebulous space where casting teams didn't know what to do with an Amitabh. And on Simi Garewal's show, he actually said, I was so desperate after ABCL went bankrupt that if Star TV called and said, we need you to sweep the studio, I was willing to do that. Okay, he has maintained that sense of humility and groundedness very much so ever since that episode of bankruptcy. Amitabh has never ever stopped being humble, approachable, writing personal letters to people who engage with him in any way that touches him or moves him. So tomorrow we will be doing our first excerpt on Amitabh Bachchan. See you tomorrow then. Take care. Bye.